welcome to Exploding Kaleidoscope Part 3. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how we can combine our two parts. So we'll be looking at how we can bake our noise, our original noise, to texture maps. And then I'll be showing you how we can apply that texture to our glass shattering animation. And then I'll be showing you how to quickly set that up for rendering. Let's jump right into it. Alright, so here I've got our two parts combined. So in part one we have what we learned in our first lesson and then obviously in part two we then have what we learned in our second lesson. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back over to our first part and we are going to bake this to a texture map that we can then apply to our exploding simulation. So we're going to be using another useful labs tool for that and that is the Labs Maps Baker. Like I said before, if you don't have this node, then make sure after you add your side effects Labs shelf, you've hit Update Toolset. So now that we've got that down, we can then pipe in our original disk into input one. To do that, as you can see, our circle is a segment, but we want the complete disk. To do that, we're just going to use actions create reference copy. And then inside our settings, we're then going to break the connection for the arc angle, delete channels, and then set this back to the default 360. So we got a complete disk, and then we are going to apply some UVs to it. So we're going to use UV project. And then in initialize, I'm just going to hit here, this button initialize, which should give us some UVs. To double check that, you can use a really useful node called UV Quick Shade. And you can see here I have some UVs. Equally, if you hit spacebar 5 with your mouse in the viewport section, you can see the viewport mode has switched to the UV view. Cool. So we have some UVs. I'm going to plug that into our first input. And then our pattern will go into the second input. So if we visualize this node and look at its parameters, we can see it's got color already enabled, but it has ambient occlusion, which we can turn off. We don't need that. The preview channel currently is set to ambient occlusion. We're just going to write color because that's what we want to be previewing to check that it's working. And the first thing we're going to change is this tracing mode, which we're going to switch to nearest surface. Next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to change this output directory path. So the first thing I'm going to replace is this dollar hit name, which I don't need or want. So I'm going to change that to something like pattern, for example. And then I'm going to add another slash, which has essentially created a folder called pattern. And then I'm going to add in version one. This means that our versions are kept nice and clean, which is very important. And then I'm going to use this pattern name again. Then I'm going to leave dollar channel, which is going to be replaced with this color string. And then I'm going to add a, another version number here, just so it's clear which version we're looking at. All right, because we're working in Houdini Apprentice, this current resolution will actually not work. You can see if I hit render, nothing's going to happen. And that's because what's actually happening inside is, is it's saving out a texture file with this resolution setting. But because we're using Houdini Apprentice, this is actually beyond the maximum resolution that we can render an image at. So if we lower it temporarily, we can hit render again. And you can see it's now compositing. And we have our texture. So we are no longer viewing this as really high detailed geometry, which is obviously not ideal. Instead, we are viewing this as a texture applied to this very simple disk. And to double check that, you can just view the file here. You can see it's saved out. If you wanted to view this, I'll just right click and hit expand path. I can then copy in this path and view it here. Unfortunately, again, because I'm using Houdini Apprentice, you might not have this issue. I'm imagining most of you are using the free version of Houdini. We're getting this Houdini logo baked in. I can show you how we can kind of find a workaround around that. Equally, you could just buy the software. But for now, I might just scale up the UVs once I come to rendering. But for now, I'm just going to leave that like that. So we have 
one frame and that's not ideal because we have an animated noise here however for some reason the labs and developers haven't actually given us the ability to render out a sequence easily so we're actually going to have to modify this node ourselves but it's not too complicated i'll show you how to do it now first thing we're going to do is hit this cog and edit parameter interface i'm just going to open up this pop this to the side for now then i'm going to right click and allow editing of contents it's going to unlock it that means we can dive inside and you're going to be met with all of these nodes we're going to be navigating over to cops baking here if you wanted to explore how this node works then this is how you would do it by unlocking and diving in we can see we have this color channel just here and finally this rock which is the one that we've been using to save out our color channel so here we have our ability to switch to render a frame range so to allow us to be able to do this higher up so we don't have to keep diving inside what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this parameter into our existing parameters drop down menu and I'm just going to pop it somewhere where I can find maybe inside the beak settings if I let go in here you can see it's placed it and the same for this start and end range as well which we'll want to be able to control I'm just going to pop that underneath so now if I hit apply and accept you can see it's now turned green which means that it's being controlled using an expression so if I was to go back up here you can see that now on our node now you can see that we have the ability to control whether or not we render a frame range so the first thing I'm going to do is set valid frame range to render frame range and then I'll start and I'll end you can change to however long you want to be saving this out for for this tutorial I'm just going to set this to 100 100 frames is more than enough and then the key bit is to make sure that you have added a $f expression I'm going to use $f4 to give us a padding of four digits so $f4 is essentially going to be our frame range and you can see if I hit the middle mouse button here it's going to expand that expression so that we see what we're outputting which is frame one and if I was to scrub through it you can see it's changing based on the frame all right I'm just going to hit render and let that cook all right so that's finished cooking you can see if I scrub through we now have this all saved out to disk which is great because now we can apply this to any geometry we like I stuck to 512 by 512 however if you were on apprentice like myself and wanted to use the most you can possibly get then that would be 920 by 920 so now that we have our image saved out I'm now gonna just copy this and then if we dive back into our exploding disk simulation from part two we can then apply the texture to this exploding animation so the way I'm going to be doing that is by dropping down a UV node a UV project just after our fracture so pop that in there visualize that and just hit initialize if I hit this button here we can see this very handy visualizer that shows us it's grabbed the geometry successfully so now that we have the UVs applied you can see we now have the UV attribute here we can then cache this simulation out again and now that that's cached out if we go to the end of our network we can add a material node and then we can dive over to the material context which I have opened up as a separate tab which you can add if you wanted to by adding another tab network view and then switching over to material and then here we can drop down our principled shader which I'm just going to call desk and then I'm just going to make sure my base color is set to one on one because that's going to multiply our texture here and if I enable use texture and then open up this and thankfully it's actually opened up where we've saved up that pattern however you can find it I'm just going to click that I currently have show sequence as one entry 
So if yours is listed, then if you enable this, you can see I can select the entire sequence, hit accept. So I want our disk to be emitting light. So to do that, I'm just going to copy this texture that we're reading in for base color. And if I enable emission, we can then paste that same texture there. Then just like we did for the base color, we need to make sure that in our emission color, we have this set to 111 as this is going to multiply our texture map. So now we have this disk material. So then I can go back over to my material node and I can find that material here, disk, accept. So it's applied the material, but we're not seeing it. And that's because our simulation is using pack geometry. So if you wanted to see what that would look like in your viewport, then you can just drop down an unpack node and you can see we have successfully applied our texture. So handy tip, I've managed to just about crop out that Houdini logo. And the way I did that was by simply scaling up in this UV project. So this is now ready for rendering. So to get this scene prepared, I'm gonna do what we always do, which is just drop down a null. And then I'm just gonna name it out disk. And then if I go up a level, I can then turn off these visualizers. And I'm just gonna drop down an empty geo container. You don't have to do this, but it's usually good practice, particularly in production. We tend to do this as lighters. So I'm just gonna use in capital letters REN so I can easily find this node. And I'm just gonna call it REN disk. Then if I dive inside, I can then just drop down an object merge node. And then I can find that out disk. And again, this is why we name things with capital letters that we want to find because anything with capital letters would automatically get listed at the top of our node network, which means it's just easier to find. So out disk, there. And the reason why I've made it a separate object, I've explained this before in other videos, is just because if you were to reference this node, for example, at render time, it would render whatever we had our render flag set to, which is this pink circle here. So to just ensure that we're always gonna be rendering the part of the network that we want, I've used this, so I'm just gonna color that as well. Just press C to open up this color dialog. And we have Ren Disk. Next thing would be to set up a camera. Click hold new camera. And I can then hit this padlock, just position our camera. Then if I go over to our out section, I can just drop down a mantra node. And then if I open up the parameters, I can then go over to objects. And by default, it's going to be reading in anything that has a display flag enabled. I'm just going to disable that. Instead, I'm going to force our render node here, rend disk. So it's always going to render no matter whether or not I have the display flag set. Rend disk. Currently, we don't have any light. We'll add some in a minute if they're needed. Rendering. We're just going to set the rendering engine to physically based PBR. And then for now, I'm just going to be turning down these limits to something a lot less, maybe even giving diffuse one instead. So even though we don't have any lights, we can hit render and we should be able to see our disk, which is great news. So if we go over to a frame where it's exploding, we can see we already have something interesting happening. Now, if we wanted to render with motion blur, enable this, you can see nothing is happening or maybe you'll notice that something incorrect is happening. And that is because if we go over to our disk, because we've retimed, we haven't technically calculated the correct motion blur for this retimed geometry. So just after our unpack, we're gonna drop down a trail node. And then our result type, we're just gonna to switch to compute velocity. Now that we have velocity, if you middle mouse, you can see we have it here, V. We just need to go over to our Ren Disk geometry node. And in our sampling, we just need to have geometry velocity blur set to velocity blur. And you can see now that motion blur is behaving correctly. The final thing you might like to do is potentially add a ground plane that this can reflect off nicely, like you saw at the beginning of this video. 
So you could very simply just drop down a grid. And then if we dive inside, just after unpack, we can add a transform and move it up. Then with this padlock, I can just reposition my camera. I'm just gonna scale up this grid. And then in that material section, if I hit Alt G with my mouse over here, I can then open up this material palette. And I'm just gonna use marble for now. You could of course make your own material with your own textures. So I'm just gonna assign marble to our grid and then make sure the grid is included in our force objects. And there you have it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching.